Hi, John Dersick here with the Ohio Department of Transportation and the Office of CAD and Mapping. And today I'm going to go over the import process to get your general summary sheet imported into Estimator to create an estimate. Um, in the previous videos I went over how to fill out the sheet and how to use the buttons on the sheet. Um, so once you're done filling out your general summary sheet and you're ready to create an estimate, you can use this create estimate sheet button and so what it, it does is when you hit this button it's going to create a sheet and it's going to fill the data in from general summary sheet to make the correct format so that estimator can read it and import so what you need filled out really is your item codes your headings additional descriptions your part names and then your part quantities it doesn't really need the sheet number stuff. It doesn't look at that. So if you didn't have it in there, it would still work. Uh, same goes for a simple form. You know, there's a button there for it. Um, same thing with the refresh data tab. You know, that that doesn't need the sheet sheet number stuff either. Okay. So once you have everything completed and filled out, you're gonna hit this create estimator sheet button. It's gonna create this sheet, and so. Um, you can take a look at it. Um, the group, is, I put the group number, group description, and group, you know, part name, all in one. And you'll see why I did that when I get into Estimator. But um, if you guys wanted to create another sheet, you can. But I made it so that it won't save over your data so that if this estimator sheet already exists say that's for like you know phase one or or, or you wanted to separate your estimates up somehow um, you can do that so next time you come and hit this sheet it's going to give you a warning saying hey estimator sheet already exists you know you need to delete that sheet or change the name of that sheet so you can just come here and just change the name of it and come back and you can hit create estimate sheet and it'll make another one so after you do that you're going to want to save the file and exit out because you can't be in it when you import it so save it close it and then open up estimator now you guys might be using a different version than what I'm using I have a newer version. I'm assuming most of you guys don't have that, the newer version. So I'm using using uh, estimator version 2.13a. So it, import process might look a little different depending on what version you have, but it's all going to work. So what you're going to want to do is go to File, Import, navigate to your file, and um, I've talked to S estimator about this and um, the files of type they list pretty much every Excel type except for a macro enabled type so you have to come here and select all files you know I'm hoping that's something that they will add but it's not that big of a deal so just make sure you change that to all files and then those files will, will appear appear and so select the file hit open and then it's going to ask you, is are you importing a catalog or an estimate? You're going to want to select estimate. Hit OK. And it's going to take a couple of seconds to load this up because the Excel file is pretty large. And so if you guys are using diff older versions, this screen is going to look a little different. You probably won't see this box over here. There's something they added. But if you do see this, you're going to want to select item data. Now everyone should see the show worksheets or show named ranges. You want to select show worksheets. And then this tab over here, it's going to list all those worksheets that were in that file you selected. You're going to find the one named estimator or whatever you changed that sheet name to. And it's going to give you a little preview down here and you can hit next. Now another difference is between versions is you might not see a couple of these columns or rows over here and so um, they add these I don't know exactly what all of them are for I haven't looked into that yet um, you know I'm not 
estimator expert. I don't know everything about it. You know, this is really just the import process. So if you guys know more about it, you know, call me up or shoot me an email because I'd like to know. Um, so these should all already be matched. If for some reason they're not matched, you know, you can click into it and then select whatever, you know, column you want to match and then you just click back and it gets added again. So you probably won't have to do any of that. So hit OK. And then it's going to take a couple seconds to load up again. So after it loads, you know, if you have different versions, again, it's going to look differently, but everyone should still see, you know, this as the same. And so um, one of the things that you can't bring in an import process from Excel is your group description. So that's why I had it in with the group name. So what you have to do as a workaround is come in here, copy and paste description over. Now you notice the second you click out of the group name, it disappears. So, you know, don't you want to be careful that you're actually copying and pasting it because it will disappear, and then you got to go back to your Excel file, figure out you know what was that name, what was that split that went with that. So, I'm only going to do a couple just to demonstrate, but you do this for all all of the headings and again this is something that I've asked them to add in the import process but we'll I don't know if they're actually going to add this or not so after you do all that if you guys have an older version where you don't see this funds tab down here then you guys are probably this is probably how you normally set them up you divide your headings up by by splits so you can come up here edit go to update price information and select the third option and that'll update your prices because you see they're all zero right now and so then you you guys are pretty much done with the older versions and you can go through and update your prices and and do all that stuff but if you have a newer version what they added was this funds tab and you have the ability now to have the same item listed in the same heading with a different split assigned to it. So you can assign each item number to a split number so that you don't need multiple roadway headings. So to do that, you first need to come over to this funds tab and you need to add in all your, your split names. And so um, depending on what catalog you guys are using, you might not see any selections in this drop down um that's something that is being worked on you know the catalog should show all of the fund ids but um so it's something you should see in the future but currently you might not see it so to get around it you have to go to edit estimate options and you need to uncheck this only transport items codes and rounding levels allowed this allows you to pretty much type in whatever you want into this field because with that checked you're only allowed to use what's in the catalog and since nothing's listed in the catalog you, you can't type anything in so you know the common ones are like 4p s7 for state which you can find that information in ellis and then you're going to put your fund package which is the, f the split name they call it a fund package um, then you can hit tab and it'll show another line and then so I'm just gonna add just a couple more you can put a description if you want um, you know with the catalog when it is updated to have all these this description will be filled out for you um, you put in your percentages priority I always put in priority one I'm not sh too sure what all that does but I'm sure one of you guys know more than me about it. And so I'll add one more.
So once you add all your, your funds in there, you want to select your default fund package right here. I'm just going to select one for this case. So that default fund package now assigns all your groups a fund package. As you see, they say 01 now. They say 01 now. So, well, that's not the case for all the headings because some of them are under different splits. So that's why all the headings are currently divided up by split so that you can easily assign all the items a fun package. So like, you know, for this roadway alternates, you know, 02, you're gonna wanna come uncheck that and switch to the 02 fun package. Same thing, you know, you're gonna do this for all the headings till they all have the appropriate split assigned to them. So then you can see, you know, each item is assigned the correct fun package. So now that you did that, you don't really need all these roadway headings anymore. So you can combine them now by dragging. So unfortunately, there's no way to drag a, a whole group into another group or multiple items. So you have to select one item at a time, click, drag, move it up to where you want to move the item and let go. And so as you can see, the fun package is still associated with that item. So. That one still says 01, this one says 02. So you're gonna do that for all the items in the heading. And so now that you did that, you don't need this heading anymore, so you can delete it. So delete that group. And so you would repeat this process for all the splits and all the headings until you, know, you only have one roadway heading. And when you do that, you don't really need the split name listed anymore so you'd want to get rid of that from the name you just have roadway so that is basically the process that I came up with to import with the workarounds I have stressed that I feel like you should be able to import a fund with the item and you shouldn't have to do this process of associating uh, item to a fund ID or fund package rather um, I don't know if that's something that they will add to the, in, the add in the future hopefully they do hopefully because then it'd be really easy because all you'd have to do is import and update prices and then you wouldn't have to go through all this tedious process of assigning all the items to a default packet fund package but currently it's not available, so this is the workaround. I still think this is faster than entering each one manually. I realize it's kind of tedious, but I still think it's faster. Um, so that's basically the import process. Um, if you guys have questions, you can you know email or call me and let me know. But um, I'm not, again, I'm not an estimator expert, so I can try to help you guys out. But, you know, you guys probably know more than me about this. I, you probably have used it longer than me. So, all right, that concludes this video. So, see you guys next time.